Hi, my name is David Steele. I'm a product manager at Arcturus. Today I'm going to show you the web user interface for the UCBF 54X product. The first thing you need to do is you need to find out what your IP address is for the device you want to log in and configure. And you can do that by pressing SW3. SW3 will cause the system to read back your IP address. IP address so now that you know the IP address you're going to use, you can just enter that into the URL line of your web browser. That'll bring up a login page. You can click login and use the username admin, the password admin. Click OK. And uh, now this will bring you to the home page of the device. This yellow dot uh, indicates the status of the voice over IP service. So the yellow dot means that it's currently offline or trying to connect. And right now we can tell because there's no phone number here that there's no service actually included on this device. It also includes our IP address, how the device is connected via DHCP, and some system information. There's uh, three buttons on the left side. One is a telephony setup wizard, which allows you to set up uh, simple configurations using these uh, pre-existing forms. Similarly, there's also a network setup wizard. If you want to configure your... Uh, network settings easily, you can just run the wizard. Logout function. You'll notice that the web interface is actually uh, HTTPS, which means that it's uh, encrypted and uh, authenticated. It'll only allow a single person to access it at a time from one IP address, uh, and will deny all other connections. Let's go over to the uh, basic settings. The basic settings allow you to configure some of the uh, generic features that you'd expect on, on a device like this. For example, your DHCP client settings, including ARP probe. The ARP probe will uh, detect to see if someone else is using the same IP address that you're trying to uh, register against. Uh, your DNS service, your local host name, uh, and some additional features, as well as being able to configure whether or not you're using DHCP client or a static IP address. Over on the left side, we can click on DHCP server. So we'll show you how you can turn the device into a DHCP server, including how you can set up configurable range for the device, lease times, and whether or not the server is enabled or disabled. There's also a DHCP client table, which allows you to assign unique DHCP addresses to specific MAC addresses, so that devices will get a consistent IP address each time. The local hosting allows you to configure both your DNS service and any local domain names, Let's go over to Advanced Settings. Here's where you can add settings into the routing table if you want to create a unique route. Used as a gateway detection tool for voice over IP. So it will detect using the STUN protocol what my external IP address is if I'm behind a NAT firewall. So for example, it knows that my external gateway is 204.50.165.202. Feature magic is something that's unique to Arcturus Voice over IP. Basically, this is our runtime configurable signaling abstraction layer, and it allows you to choose certain features that will then change the way the signaling stack handles calls and handles call flows. A couple of these to point out are, uh, for example, disable call waiting. You can turn off call waiting for the device so that it will only handle one call at a time. If you're using an intercom device, uh, this can be quite helpful fall back to G711U law. What this means is if the device can't negotiate another codec, it will always negotiate G711 failing that. Let's go on to voice over IP. The voice over IP settings in the device uh, include the account, and as I showed you, there's multiple forms that uh, exist, or you can just overwrite any of these to create your own if you've got a local account. There's also options that are in this page. These include things like uh, blocking and restricting outgoing calls. See audio settings, which allow you to change volume as well as adjust codecs. There's also intercom answer settings, and you can enable or disable the local D DTMF tones as well. The phone book is uh, a way that you can add in uh, unique addresses and uh, telephone numbers into the device. Now, in the case of, uh, you, you can add multiple uh, phone book entries, and then you can assign them to different speed dials. The speed dials are useful for two things. One, they cut down on the number of digits you need to dial to place a call. And number two, speed dial number one and speed dial number two are actually directly connected to GPIO number one and number two, which means that you can create a push-to-call uh, system very easily by assigning GPIO number one or number two.
and that's the out-of-the-box demo. There's another video on that as well. So let's go over to the admin settings. Uh, the password setting allows you to change the password for the device. Firmware allows you to select a file on your local PC machine and then upload it to the device for uh, installing new firmware. Reset allows you to either restore the device back to factory defaults or reboot the device. The backup and restore function allows you to backup the device's configuration. NTP is a network time protocol and uh, there's a number of uh, network time protocol servers that the system can use uh, in the background automatically and will rotate uh, through them so there isn't a denial of service attack to any particular one or you can add your own NTP server in as well as your time zone offset as well. The diagnostic tab contains two features. One is a simple ping function which allows you to ensure that you can check your network connectivity and the second one is uh, a capture diagnostic information button. Provisioning is uh, a pretty unique feature to this device as well and uh, fairly powerful as well. What provisioning lets you do is uh, it's an HTTPS web client so the web UI is an HTTPS web server the web client will remotely connect to an external uh, web server and it will authenticate with that web server using the unique credentials that are contained in the device so for example it will use its serial number and firmware ID. The web server can actually provide a unique file and that unique file is actually a, a script that can be executed by the management middleware and then provision the device. So it has full access to the management system inside the device. And then uh, under the status page we've got uh, a bunch of information including all the software versions as well as the interfaces and probably most importantly the system log. And the system log contains uh, all the details uh, of all the actions that are going on in the device. And in this case, what you're seeing right now is a lot of uh, notices saying that uh, someone named admin admin is using the web page. Uh, and that's, of course, uh, me. So there you go. That's uh, a quick walk through uh, the web user interface of the UCBF54X device.